Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. We are back playing Hero Quest, only this time we are using my brand new edition from Hasbro. The other day on the channel, I played through Lair of the Orc Warlord using my original 1990s copy. And when I was doing that, I had always planned to run the scenario again using my new edition by Hasbro. The reason being, my original copy uses the European version of the rules and the Hasbro edition uses the North American rule set. And there are a lot of differences. I'm not going to go into them here. I have done a separate video on my channel talking about most of the major differences between the European and North American rule sets. But yeah, I thought it would be fun to play the Lair of the Orc Warlord scenario a second time, this time using the North American rules. And I will be the first to admit that Lair of the Orc Warlord is not the best scenario I could have picked. The reason being in this scenario, and I'm mentioning spoilers now, as you would imagine this whole playthrough will be a spoiler, there is only one trap, there are no secret doors, and most of the enemies are orcs and goblins, which play exactly the same in both the European and North American rule sets. Regardless, we are going to press on, and as you can see, I have set up the first room in the dungeon. Unlike in the European version of the rules, where the heroes start adjacent to the entry tile, in the North American version of the rules, they start on the entry tile. So that is how I have placed them. And before we get right into the game, I'm just going to very quickly mention that in the European rules, the heroes do not start with equipment, but in the North American rules, they do start with equipment. So here's our Barbarian. He has attack 3 dice, defend 2 dice, 8 body and 2 mind. And that stat profile incorporates the bonuses from his starting item, the Broadsword. And here is the Broadsword. This wide blade gives you an attack strength of 3 combat dice. Then we have the Dwarf. Attack 2 dice, defend 2 dice, body 7, mind 3. And he starts with the Short Sword, which gives you an attack strength of 2 combat dice. Next we have the Elf, and the Elf was gender swapped in the new edition, so we have a female character for a change, and she has attack two dice, defend two dice, body six, and mind four. She also starts with the short sword, giving her an attack strength of two. And for this playthrough, she has the set of earth spells. Finally, we have our wizard, attack one dice, defend two dice, body four, mind six. And he has the dagger, which gives him an attack strength of one combat dice, but he can also throw the dagger, in which case he gets to make one ranged attack and then the dagger is lost. And this is an item that was not present in the European version at all. And you may also have noticed there was a difference with the short swords. The short swords in the North American rule set do not allow for diagonal attacks, but in the European version of the rules they do. Finally, of course, I should mention that our wizard gets the other three spell sets. That's fire, wind and water. With all of that done, we are ready to begin. Our Barbarian goes first, rolling 2d6 for movement, getting a 5. Obviously, we're going to walk up to the door, we will open that door. Opening the door is a free action, which means after we've opened the door, we can continue moving and we will still get an action as well. Actions are attacking, casting a spell, searching for treasure, searching for traps or searching for secret doors, and yes, Searching for traps and searching for secret doors are two separate actions in the North American version. Knock knock, who's inside? We have found four goblins having a tea party. Now, I should point out two things here. First of all, another issue that I had with my original playthrough using my 1990 copy of HeroQuest was that I had to use Hasbro's app in order to run the dungeon for me. And that means as I was exploring the dungeon, I was setting out the rooms as they appeared in the North American version of this mission. But in reality, there's quite a few differences. Normally, the North American versions of the missions have a lot more monsters. For example, in the original European version, there are only two goblins in this room. The other thing to note is that in the new edition of Hero Quest, the board is much bigger, the squares are much bigger, but the furniture is pretty much comparable in size. As a result, it's a little bit less clear in the new version which squares are blocked by furniture. As you can see here, there is a table in the middle of the room and that is supposed to be blocking all six of the central squares, even though it does look like you could quite happily stand on any of those squares. But let's carry on, we've got enough movement to get inside the room and hit one of these goblins in the head, so that's exactly what we are going to do. Despite the larger board, it is still a little bit of a squeeze to get the heroes in squares where there are doors, but we have managed it there, and we are going to hit the goblin directly in front of us, rolling three combat dice. We have rolled two skulls, that's a good hit. 
Looking at the Goblin Reference card, we can see that they are exactly the same as in the European version of the rules. They have a movement of 10. They attack with 2 dice, defend with 1 dice, have 1 body point and 1 mind point. As I have inflicted 2 hits, and they only get 1 dice to defend and 1 body point, it is impossible for them to soak 2 damage, so the Goblin dies. That finishes our Barbarian's turn, because you cannot carry on moving after performing an action, so we are going to move to the Dwarf. That's an 8, and that is just enough to get into the room and get into base contact with the Goblin on the far side of the table. Obviously when you are moving in the game, a few things to note, you cannot move diagonally, and also it's really important which squares you stand on, because there may be traps. Anyway, we're going to hit this Goblin rolling 2 combat dice. And we have rolled a double shield, that is a miss, and I really hope that our Dwarf in this playthrough isn't as completely useless as the Dwarf was in my last playthrough. Next we activate the Elf. We have rolled a 7, and I think what we will do is search for treasure in the room we're in, and then move up behind the Dwarf, assuming we don't get a wandering monster. We draw the top treasure card and we have found jewels! We have found a small wooden box. It is simple looking and very old. Within you discover that it is lined with velvet and contains very small jewels worth 50 gold coins. Record the money on your character sheet. Do not return this card to the deck. Lovely stuff. Let's move. And finally we have the wizard. In the rules it does state that every hero can search each room once, but I don't play by that rule, I play that once a room has been searched for treasure, that's it. So our wizard is just going to move into the room with the rest of the heroes and try and be useful next turn. It's a three. He doesn't even manage to do that. Useless wizard. Obviously too busy reading some scrolls or something. Well, we're out of heroes, so it's time for our goblins to activate. First of all, we will use the goblin by the door to attack the barbarian. We roll one skull, forcing the Barbarian to make a save with two combat dice. And he does not make the save, so he takes a wound. Next, our second Goblin will attack the Dwarf. He rolls a skull too. But our stout Dwarf defends the attack. And now we're going to do a bit of a shimmy slide. We're going to back away with that Goblin, and then the third Goblin in the room is going to hop over him and make a swing at the Dwarf as well because as far as I'm aware, there is nothing stopping monsters passing through squares containing other monsters. So that goblin moves there to defend the door, and now this goblin attacks the dwarf. Rolling another skull, forcing a save. And this time the dwarf does not make that save, and he takes a wound as well. But that's it for Zargon's turn. We will start with the barbarian. He is obviously going to attack the goblin adjacent to him. And remember, one skull will force a save for the goblin, and two skulls will kill it outright. We have indeed rolled two skulls. It's great to be the Barbarian. Let's roll for movement, see if we can get round adjacent to the other goblin. We have rolled a five. That puts us there. And now our dwarf activates and he is going to try to redeem himself by killing this goblin. And again he misses. He's just going to back out of the way and let the elf have a go instead, I think. He's rolled a ten. He's going to go and hide behind the Barbarian. Our elf takes her turn. That's a six, we're just going to move adjacent to the closest goblin and attack that one. Let's show the dwarf how it's done. Well, we've got a hit at least. Goblins defend with one dice. And that's a heroic shield, not the evil shield the goblin was looking for, so the elf does indeed kill the goblin. Unfortunately, she cannot continue her move, so it's time to activate the wizard instead. Getting an eight and I think he is just going to move into the room and hide behind the Barbarian and the Dwarf. The wizard isn't allowed to search the room at the moment because there is still an enemy present. Speaking of which, the Goblin is going to activate and he may as well attack the Elf because the Elf is the squishiest target available. Two combat dice. Two hits, that is bad news for the Elf. We roll to defend. And we block one, so we do take a wound. Considering these goblins aren't any tougher than the goblins in the European edition, they're giving me a bit of trouble really. But it's now the Barbarian's turn, and the Barbarian is going to open the door and move on questing through the dungeon. He is perhaps foolishly going to rely on the Elf and the Dwarf to kill the last goblin. We roll a 5 for movement, we're going to advance to the door and open it. I only played this mission the other day, I remember what's on the other side. It's one of our big lad abominations. 
And these things move six squares, attack with three dice, defend with three dice, and they have two body points. The Barbarian is obviously going to attack. Let's hope for three skulls. <laughs> and there it is, three skulls. Of course, the Abomination does get three dice to defend and has two body points, so does have a good chance of surviving this attack anyway. We have rolled a single evil shield and two skulls. That evil shield blocks one wound, two wounds get through, and as our abomination only has two body points, it does die. Despite the fact it is so much tougher than the European counterpart, the femur, it goes down with a single mighty swing from the barbarian. The Barbarian has clearly brought his A-game today. He's not messing about. Conversely, let's see what the Dwarf can do. He's rolled a 12, and I think we aren't going to risk it. We're going to move around and attack the Goblin rather than relying on the Elf to deal with it. So we squeeze in there and we roll our two combat dice. And we have rolled a single hit, forcing the Goblin to defend with one dice. And it cannot defend that attack, so at last, the Dwarf gets a kill. That does finish the Dwarf's turn, it's time for the Elf to activate. We rolled a 3, which is not enough to get out of the room and into the next room, so we're just going to move one step closer to the Dwarf, and then we will search the room we are in for treasure. We cozy up there, and then we draw the top treasure card, and it is a Potion of Healing, that's a really good find. In a bundle of rags, you find a small bottle of bluish liquid. You can drink this healing potion at any time, restoring the number of body points equal to a roll of one red die. You cannot, however, exceed your starting number of body points. This may only be used once. Do not return the card to the deck. Now our wizard activates. And he's only rolled a three for movement as well, so the best he can do is sneak up behind our barbarian friend. It's Zargon's turn, but oh look, there are no monsters on the board, so we go straight back to our Barbarian, who is going to press on and open the next door. We roll a 10 for movement. We advance to this door. I know this map, I know there are no traps in this room. And of course we're going to open the door as a free action. And here we are in the corridor. We still have plenty of movement left, so we're actually going to move down to the next door, open that one, and reveal what is beyond there as well. That's cost us seven movement points so far. And beyond the door, we find two orcs. We have enough movement points. We're going to get stuck in. We could stay on the other side of the door, wait for the orcs to come to us, and minimize the amount of attacks we can take each turn. But at the moment, we've got a wizard with some healing spells. We found a healing potion, and the barbarian's pretty tough. Hopefully, we can kill one of these orcs straight away anyway. Let's tackle the orc directly in front of us. He's got a great big axe. We have rolled a single skull. And if we look at the orc card, we can see they have a movement of eight squares. They attack with three dice, defend with two dice, and have a single body point. So we are going to be rolling two dice here. And if we get even one black shield, the orc will survive. And it does not. For people who don't know, by the way, the dice distribution is three skulls, two heroic shields, and one evil shield. Our barbarian really is having a fantastic time in the dungeon today. Next, our Dwarf will activate. He has rolled an 8. And our Dwarf is just going to head into the next room, I think, and search for treasure. We'll stand directly in front of the door because that seems to make the most sense. And then we draw the top treasure card. We have found a small purple flask. You can drink this strange smelling liquid at any time, enabling you to roll two extra combat dice the next time you attack. This may only be used once. Do not return this card to the deck. We're doing well with our searches so far, but remember, Almost half of the deck is traps and monsters, and we have now found three treasures that do not go back into the deck. So we're going to start pushing our luck soon when we continue searching. Let's move our elf. We have rolled a seven. So we're just going to head out into the corridor. We want to go round the corner and head up towards the north of the board. And because we finish our turn on a T-junction, we can look into the corridor beyond. We can see that both ends of the corridor are blocked off with walls, and there is a single door. However, I have to say, the wall tokens are a bit difficult to see on the passageways, so I'm going to swap those out for rock fall tiles. There we go. That's a little bit better. Let's activate our wizard. Six. And we're going to stay there by the door because we want to go with the elf. Zargon activates and our orc attacks the barbarian. It's two misses and one hit. Our barbarian defends with two dice. 
and fails, so we take another wound. Not to worry, because it's the Barbarian's turn now, and he is going to hit this orc straight in the face. But only gets a single hit, the orc gets two dice to defend. But the orc does not defend, and as the orc only has a single wound, that orc is defeated too. The Barbarian's kill streak continues. He gets to move now. Seven. Now I know we have split the party a bit, but I don't want to send all four of my heroes up to that north room. I already know what's up there because I've played through this scenario before. I think the Barbarian is just going to hang out by this other closed door, and next turn he's going to wander into that room instead. Normally, if you don't know the layout of the map, if you haven't played the scenario before, I wouldn't really suggest this tactic, but the Barbarian is a bit of a loner, a bit of an edgelord. He's going to go his own way. And I have to say, the more I use this miniature, the more I really like it. Right, let's get a big roll for the dwarf. Eight. We will just move to there. We're going to lend support to the rest of the heroes. And as we haven't done an action, in this situation, I would use an action to search for traps. I already know there's no traps in this corridor, but under normal circumstances, that's what I would do, because you can't search for treasure in corridors, and also, quite clearly, there are no secret doors here. The elf gets a nine. And we're just going to move to there. We do have enough movement points to reach the door and open it. But as I know there are some nasty beasties on the other side, I want to make sure all of my heroes are prepared for it. What I am going to do is cast Rock Skin. Rock Skin states this spell may be cast on any one hero, including yourself. That hero may throw one extra combat die when defending. The spell is broken when the hero suffers one body point of damage. And the elf is going to cast that spell on herself. Let's activate our wizard. That's a five. Not great. The conga line of heroes advances, and because there are no Zargon enemies to deal with, we go straight to the Barbarian's turn. He's going to kick down a door and then kick in some faces. It's a big roll for him. We open the door. The Barbarian is delighted to find a couple of cowering goblins. He's going to attack the one closest to the bookcase. Again, I should point out that charging into a room of monsters like this isn't always a great idea because there may be traps. And of course, you can't search for traps while there are monsters present. So always be a little bit careful. Think about how the monsters are positioned in the room and whether they look like they might be standing around a pit trap just to lure you in. We roll three dice to attack. Only a single hit, which means the goblin does get to defend. But the goblin does not defend. Once again, our Barbarian succeeds in just murderating everything he finds. There's no experience points in Hero Quest, but if there was, the Barbarian has just hoovered them all up. The Dwarf activates. He's rolled a 10, that's plenty to get into the room and start causing trouble. Two movement points to the door, knock knock. And we have revealed an Orc and another big fish boy. The Dwarf is going to chug his potion of strength that he found. That gives him an extra two combat dice so he can charge into that abomination and roll four combat dice, hopefully getting plenty of skulls. And by the way, chugging a potion is a free action so he does get to do it whilst attacking. No whammies. We have rolled two skulls. Not bad, but the abomination does get three dice to defend and has two body points. But it doesn't defend anything. That's a big miss for the abomination. He takes two damage and does die. That potion was well spent by the dwarf. And that leaves the elf to mop up the remaining orc. She rolls a four for movement. And because she wants to make sure that orc doesn't make a run for it and goes out in the corridor to attack the wizard, she's going to stand in front of the doorway. She rolls two dice to attack. One hit. The orc defends with two dice and fails to make any saves. My enemies just cannot catch a break with their defense rolls today. And now the heroes have cleared the room out, the wizard can go in and search it for treasure. If he gets a high enough roll, of course. Seven. We're just going to stand there and search for treasure. And because there are special notes in the mission book for this particular room, we don't draw a treasure card. Instead, we find whatever the book tells us we found. And our wizard has found a staff. This long, sturdy wooden staff gives you the attack strength of one combat die. Because of its length, the staff enables you to attack diagonally. You may not use a shield when using this weapon. And that means our wizard now has two weapons. On his turn, he could attack with his dagger with one combat dice, he could throw his dagger with one combat dice, or he can attack with his staff with one combat dice, but the staff allows him to make diagonal attacks as well. 
So he's not really getting any stronger, but he has more options for making attacks while staying out of the range of the enemies. Speaking of which, it's time to activate Zargon and the Goblin in the Barbarian's room is going to attack. I feel like he might have been better off just running away. But he has hit the Barbarian twice. And the Barbarian fails both of his rolls, so he takes an additional two wounds. He's down to four wounds total. Still, it's his go now, so he's going to do his best to rectify the situation. And he's quite clearly in a mood. He absolutely decimates that goblin. Of course, the Barbarian could now move, but he is going to take this opportunity to rest up. He's going to wait where he is so that the others can catch up with him. Let's do some fast travelling with the other heroes. Dwarf gets eight and goes to there. Elf gets five and goes to there. The wizard is going to cast Swift Wind on himself. This spell may be cast on any one hero, including yourself. Its powerful burst of energy enables that hero to roll twice as many red dice as normal the next time they move. So we roll four dice for movement. That's an eight. And that's a five for a total of 13, which gets us to there. And that finishes our turn. So it's time for the barbarian to activate. And the barbarian is going to search for treasure. And according to the mission book, he finds 24 gold coins and a potion of healing that will restore four hit points in the cupboard. Now he could immediately drink that potion of healing and restore the four body points that he has lost so far. But it's generally a better idea to save those potions if you can and use your spells first. Because spells will replenish at the start of each adventure while potions are discarded after use. Anyway, our Barbarian, after searching, can move. He is going to move down next to the closed door, but he is not opening it yet. And now the Dwarf activates. Six. He can only move five of his six spaces because the Wizard is right there, and you cannot finish your turn on the same square as another hero. The Elf rolls seven, and again cannot move the full distance because the Wizard is in the way. Let's move him. He's rolled an eleven. That's going to be enough to get into the room with the Barbarian. And we're going to cast Water of Healing on the Barbarian. This spell may be cast on any hero, including yourself. Contact with this revitalizing water restores up to four lost body points, which will restore our Barbarian to eight. It's now the Barbarian's turn. He's still not prepared to go into the next room. I know what's in the next room, and I want to make sure all of the other heroes are with us. So he's just going to wait there. The Dwarf rolls an eight. Exactly enough to go and stand next to the Barbarian. And now we activate the elf. We have rolled a three. That's not really enough to get us into the adjacent room. So what we're going to do is we're going to cast Pass Through Rock on ourselves. Pass Through Rock can be cast on any one hero, including yourself. That hero may then move through walls on their next move. So we're going to jump straight through the wall to go and hang out with our friends. And now it's the wizard's turn to activate. And I think what we're going to do with the wizard is move right into the corner next to the barbarian. And then we will just cower there waiting for the barbarian to show us what to do, which he's going to do right now. He rolls an eight for movement and he's going to open the door. And we have found three orcs and an abomination performing the classic pincer tactic. We are definitely going to go and say hi to them. And normally my barbarian would target the femur, but there is a chance he won't kill the femur in one turn. And if he is standing adjacent to the femur, it's very difficult for anybody else to attack it because of the formation they're in. So instead he is going to move and try and take out one of the orcs and minimize the number of attacks we face on Zargon's turn. So we will move to there and try and whack one of these axe brothers. Two skulls, that's a good roll. The orc will have to roll two black shields to defend. He fails to get any black shields. Next, the dwarf will activate. And unfortunately, he doesn't have a potion of strength anymore. He rolls a six. We're just going to move into the corner and try and fight the orc there. Two skulls would be good. And two skulls we get. The orc has to roll two black shields here. And it's two shields, but it's not the ones they're looking for. The orc dies. Time for the elf to do something. That's an eight. That's a good roll. I think the best thing we can do is go into the corner and try and kill the other orc. That cost us six movement points to get there. And we get one skull. The orc defends. And finally, one of our defense rolls comes good. The orc is still alive and will get to retaliate. 
we now activate our wizard. We've got a nine for movement, which is plenty. But unfortunately, if we want to cast a spell on the abomination, which we definitely do, it's going to put us in a position where the orc can attack. There is nowhere I can stand where I could cast a spell on the abomination and avoid the orc hunting me down like a guided missile. So we might as well just go all out for it. We're going to go into the room to the bottom corner and we will cast a spell. So we move to there. And the spell we're going to cast is Tempest. This spell creates a small whirlwind that envelops one monster of your choice. That monster misses its next turn. We will cast this on the Abomination. And that is the end of that. So it's now Zargon's turn. We have one Orc to activate, and he's definitely going to go and try and pummel the wizard. He charges down there and attacks with three dice. Rolling a single skull, the wizard defends with two dice. And he rolls two shields, easily defending the clumsy attack. Okay, it's time for the Barbarian to activate. He is going to attempt to kill this Abomination. I rolled for movement because I wanted to get around to here, so I needed at least three movement points. And from here, we're going to attack with three dice. And we have only rolled one skull. That's bad news for us. But the Abomination does not defend, so it takes a wound. So, unlike in the European edition, we hit the Abomination, we wound the Abomination, but it stays put. And we would normally place one of these under the miniature, but I'm not going to do that, I think we can remember. It's time for the Dwarf to have a go. He's going to move adjacent to the Abomination and try and take the remaining wound. Two dice, two skulls would be really good. But we get two shields, so that has not worked out for us. The Elf is going to attack the remaining Orc. And we are going to go all the way around the room to get there. We will stand there. And we roll two shields again. That is a big fluff for us. Now it's time for our wizard to do something useful. And although he did roll enough movement to run away, he's not going to. He's just going to move to the top corner of the room. And from there, he is going to cast a spell on the abomination. We are going to cast Fire of Wrath. This spell may be cast on any one monster, blasting it with flames. It inflicts one body point of damage, unless the monster can immediately roll a five or a six on one red dice. And we roll a four, so we do inflict a wound on the Abomination. That is enough to kill it. But now the remaining Orc will get to attack, and he is going to hunt down the wizard again. He moves to there and attacks with three dice. One skull. And the wizard defends quite handily again. Time to activate the Barbarian again. He needs to kill this last Orc. And he rolls enough to get up to the door and do that. Three dice, looking for a big result here. Just the one skull. But the Orc does not defend. Obviously, it's worn itself out, throwing itself at that wizard over and over again. And I don't think we're going to open the door. We're just going to gather around it. So on the Dwarf's turn, we will search for treasure in this room, drawing the top treasure card. And we have found a gem. Tucked into the toe of an old boot, you find a small gem worth 35 gold coins. Record the money on your character sheet. Do not return this card to the deck. So having searched with the dwarf, all of the other heroes are going to scooch in around the barbarian. And now we are ready to start a fresh turn. Let's kick the door down and face Ulag. Oh, that's a point. Because I'm playing this mission for the second time and following on from a previous video, I forgot to tell you what we're doing in this dungeon. Let me explain. Prince Magnus has ordered that the Orc Warlord Ulag, who was responsible for the imprisonment of Sir Ragnar, be sought out and destroyed. When Ulag is destroyed, the heroes are to be rewarded 180 gold coins to be divided among them. Any treasure found in Ulag's stronghold may be kept by the finder alone. That's a weird stipulation that treasure can only be kept by the person who found it. I don't see how the prince would be able to enforce that. But anyway, we're here to assassinate an Orc chieftain. Let's do that. We have rolled seven for our Barbarian, who is going to open the door. Knock, knock. We have found Ulag. And although Ulag is a big threat, he does have a big, chunky Dread Warrior there protecting him. And our Barbarian is going to focus on that threat first, I think. We move to there and roll three dice. Two skulls. That's not a bad start. Unfortunately, Dread Warriors move seven, attack with four dice, defend with four dice, and have three body points. So regardless of what we roll in defense here, the Dread Warrior will not die. And we defend one of the hits anyway, so our Dread Warrior takes a single wound. Next, we activate our Dwarf. 
And he's rolled a six, so he's going to move in behind the barbarian and try and kill that cheeky goblin in the corner. Two dice, two skulls would be great. One skull, that'll do. And the goblin does not defend. Next up, we need to move our elf, and our elf still has rock skin, so she's a bit tough at the moment and is quite happy to take some hits if she needs to. So she's going to move through the door and attack the goblin. And I don't need to roll for movement there because she's only moving two spaces, which is the minimum she would move anyway. We've rolled two skulls, that's fantastic because a goblin cannot defend against two hits. Finally, we need to move our wizard and we have to hope we roll at least a three on our movement. And we do, we roll an eight, that's fine. We're going to move into the room and get into the corner so we are completely surrounded by our friends. And now we come to a problem with the wizard and a bit of a problem that I have with the North American rule set really. In the European version of the rule set, if you are in a room, you have line of sight to everything in that room, regardless of where things are positioned. So in the European version of the game, the wizard would be able to stand in this corner and cast spells. However, in the North American rules, the wizard gets a massive nerf because line of sight is always drawn center of square to center of square. And that means standing in that corner there, we only have line of sight to our allies. And that prevents us from casting any offensive magic on Ulag or his bodyguard. Normally, I would say that this true line of sight is probably the better option. But the rooms in HeroQuest are so small, they usually have so much stuff crammed into them, it really does feel like a big nerf on the wizard. It really does feel like the wizard has to really struggle to be in the position where he can cast a spell and still be safe afterwards. Regardless, the spell we are going to cast is Courage, and we're going to cast it on the Barbarian. If we look at the wording, it says, This spell may be cast on any one hero, including yourself. The next time that hero attacks, they may roll two extra combat dice. The spell is broken the moment a monster is no longer in the hero's line of sight. Now that feels like a mishmash of several different versions of this card. First of all, we have the bit that says the next time a hero attacks. That implies this is a one-time buff. The very next time you attack, you get two extra combat dice and then the spell is discarded. However, there is also this bit about if there are no monsters in line of sight, which implies that the spell remains in effect until that condition is met. If we look at my original European version of the card, it says this spell may be cast on any one player. That player may then throw two extra dice each time he attacks until the spell is broken. The spell is broken when there are no monsters visible to the player. So I think there's a little bit of a cock up in the wording of the Courage card, and I do think it is supposed to be something that remains in effect until there are no monsters in line of sight. Whatever, I digress. Let's get back to the point. Our Barbarian is now Couraged, and the way I'm going to play it is that that Courage will remain in effect for the rest of this combat, effectively until Ulag and the Dread Warrior are dead. Unfortunately, that does end the hero's turn, and now it is time for the Dread Warrior to activate. He is going to bash the Barbarian with his mace. He rolls four dice to attack. Fortunately, he has only rolled one skull. The Barbarian defends with two dice. But he does not defend, he takes one wound. Now, I could move the Dread Warrior out of the way and then move Ulag in to attack the Barbarian too, but I think Ulag would rather face off against the Elf, who has less chance of harming him, so we're going to attack the Elf instead. Ulag's attack profile is listed in the Lair of the Orc Warlord scenario as movement 10, attack 4, defend 5, body 2. So we are rolling four dice to attack the Elf. And again, it's only one hit. The Elf rolls three dice to defend because of her rock skin. And she does defend the attack. And because she successfully defended, her rock skin stays in play as well. It's time for our Barbarian to activate. He is now rolling five dice against the Dread Warrior. And it's a really bad attack. He only makes one hit. And the Dread Warrior defends it. That's really bad news for the Barbarian. Next up, we have the Dwarf. And unfortunately, because of the way the Dwarf is positioned, he can't do anything at all. He doesn't even have any items that he can use to help. So we're going to go straight to the Elf's turn. And the Elf is going to attack Ulag with two dice. And it's two hits. That's fantastic. Unfortunately, Ulag defends with five combat dice. And he gets one shield. He deflects one wound, takes one wound. Because he has a body value of two, he is still in the fight, but he only has one wound left. 
and now we activate the wizard. The wizard is going to skip back past the elf so that he is standing on the other side of the doorway. That will give him a diagonal line of sight to Ulag and that will allow us to cast an offensive spell on him. So we stand there and I think the spell we should cast is Ball of Flame. Ball of Flame inflicts two body points of damage. The monster then rolls two red dice. For each five or six, the damage is reduced by one. Both of those hits get through. Ulag is killed. The wizard is victorious. It is now time for the Dread Warrior to activate, and he may as well pummel the Barbarian again. Really, he would love to get his hands on the wizard, but he just can't. He has hit twice. The Barbarian has to defend well here. And indeed he does. That's a double defense. No damage gets through. But now the Barbarian gets to retaliate because it's the end of Zargon's turn and the Barbarian is still rolling with courage. So he is rolling five dice. And that is more like it. That is five skulls. That is huge. The Dread Warrior gets four dice to defend. So one hit has already gone through. That means he has to now roll four black shields or he dies. He defends one, but another three get through. That is a massive hit, and the Dread Warrior is defeated. And that is pretty much it. There is one door left to open, and I know that on the other side of it, there is an empty treasure chest with a pit trap in front of it, because obviously I've already played through this scenario. So at this point, I am going to call it a win for the heroes. Normally, you would have to return to the stairwell and get out, but I don't really see the point in playing through those extra turns. There are no monsters left to defeat, we just need to wander out. And now we can take stock of how well we did. Obviously the Barbarian had a really fun time in the dungeon. He did get reduced to 4 hit points at one point, but he was healed back up by the wizard and he finished the game with 7 hit points. He also found 24 gold pieces and a potion of healing which he can take on his next adventure. The Dwarf had a slightly better time than his European counterpart. He finished the game with 6 hit points and he found a gem worth 35 gold coins. The Elf also did quite well. He took 1 wound, finishing on 5 hit points, but he found jewels worth 50 gold and he found a healing potion that will restore 1 red dice worth of hit points. Meanwhile, the Wizard found a fancy staff that allows him to attack diagonally. And of course, for killing Ulag, the heroes are awarded 180 gold pieces, so they get 45 gold coins each. And there we have it, Lair of the Orc Warlord, take two. I appreciate this wasn't dramatically different from my first playthrough of this scenario using the European rules, but it was very nice to see the bigger board with the new terrain elements on it and all of the new miniatures. Of course, nothing is painted at the moment, but that is something that I will get around to. I have an interesting idea for that, or I guess an interesting idea. That will be coming up on the channel at some point. For now, I think I'm going to call it a day. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.